How you on, folks? I'm Shane Rooney, also known as the Peaky Blogger. I'm here with my co-hosts, Dean Hegarty and Ryan Sharkey from Racing Records. And we're going to look through uh, the racing gone by this week and look into the racing coming up for the week ahead. Uh, we were supposed to be joined by Paddy Merrigan, but that's going to be done at a later date now. Uh, so it's just the three of us today, lads. Uh, I suppose well, to kick things off, basically... Uh, we may as well start off with the likes of Sunday. Uh, we had a double header there with Cork, a very decent day in the patron. Uh, obviously, Dean Hegarty tipped up Sace Gold. I think it was what price was he? He was nine to it nine was to four. Three, was three to one the night before? Three I won it. Thirteen days. That was some land. Um, yeah, that was stealing money. Stealing money. <laughs> yeah, definitely was. It was definitely for me anyway. It looked to be the best horse of the day. Um, definitely in Cork and then Punchestown Sky Ace I mentioned it here in the podcast last week uh, put in a very very good word for it ended up winning a 28 to 1 Sky Ace actually it's 600 euro that's definitely a great bargain buy for Burton Hand Syndicate uh, Shark Hanlon has definitely worked his magic with, magic with her and uh, she definitely looks to be a nice sort of a horse to come She's 25 to 1 for the, the mayor's novice hurdle, lads. Um, is she worth, I suppose, a cheeky little each way? Uh, uh, each way, maybe, but like, is she really going to be honeysuckle? Mayor, the mayor's novice now. It's the mayor's novice. It won't not be. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Then bang on. Belt away. <laughs> I definitely think she's great value there now, to be quite yeah. honest. And like, what a story it'd be for a horse to be bought for 600 euros to end up going on to be a Cheltenham winner. Oh, I, I would be, I'd, I'd be agreeing with you, Shane. I think a 25 to 1. Like, she's, she's worth I'm a pop. Like, you know, and like, she's the way she's just improved from run to run. And like, you know, she gets on well with Jody McGarvey. Like, could be a story in the head, or it could be a story in the making now for the big yeah. one this festival. Yeah, and what's funny is Spooky's underestimated her every single time. She's always yeah, every choice. single time. <laughs> you see, yeah. you see the lights in the race and pose, like the the stuff they say about her. Like, uh, probably a bit lucky for the last two runs, but ah, uh, she's surely yeah. going to fail now this time. <laughs> yeah. Like it's crazy. It's pure madness. Like they just can't figure out that a horse that costs six hundred euro ended up being a grade one winner. Like, it's just absolutely crazy, and it just shows what's under your nose, basically. Uh, yeah. Moving on into Tuesday, uh, Punchestown, for me anyway, Cape Gentleman, uh, was definitely one of the horses to take out of it. Definitely looks to be something along the lines of a Ballymore horse. Uh, I think he has great, great potential. Obviously, look at the softer ground, definitely suits him. And in my personal opinion, and I know myself and Dean, we have disagreed on this, but Eat Lad Rear definitely looks to be a horse definitely to be taken out of it going into the winter. It was his first run in a chasing or, or, a, or, or a standard chase. Uh, jumped absolutely soundly, very straight, very forward. Uh, I definitely think the more it runs, the better it's going to get. And as a novice chasing type, uh, I definitely think Eat Lad Rear is definitely one to be taken into the winter. Lads, what did you make of Punchestown Tuesday and what would you take all of it? Yeah, look, Shane, um, that one there, you know, like, it's the perfect start over fences. It's one from one over fences. Um, he's entered into a grade one over Christmas, isn't he, at Leverstein? Yeah. Um, I think Andy the friends in that race as well, so it's it's a very hot race. You wouldn't yeah. want to be... <laughs> no. But then again, look at Andy Dufresne wasn't the best in, in Navender recently. He, yeah, like, that, that's true. Like he, but, he uh, was it is, it's a hot race. Yeah, like I, 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 I don't know. I, I, I nearly I nearly side with with um Eat Ladder Rear on that one, like because at the end of the day, Eat Ladder Rear won with plenty in hand, and Andrew Frayne had to be really, really pushed out to, to win in Avon. And that was I think he was what? He was one to three. He was one to three that day, like, and he just barely scraped home. Whereas Eat Ladder Rear was two to one and it stayed two to one all day and one with plenty in hand and went going away. But um, look at it, in my personal opinion, I think Eat Let Her Ear is definitely one to be, I suppose, taken out for going on into the, into the winter months and into winter ground, basically. Dean, what did you make of 
uh, Punchestown Tuesday and what would you be taking out of it? Um, just there on on that um, the one that you're on about there that he cleared the rear like you know as, as he says like we kind of split opinions on it I don't think that the race was of great standard you know is she going to rock up at a group or is he going to rock up in a, a group one on, on Ferry House or at Leopardstown or somewhere on Christmas and and one, uh, the jury would be out with me on that. Like uh, the second home that day, like he's, I actually thought that day he might have had the better chance because of his chase experience. But it just looks like a horse that has had a number of goes and just can't get his head in front. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's a couple of fences must out. I'd like to see it getting a real test before I would commit to it. Now, it's not like Henry, it's on, not unlike Henry to Bromhead or anybody to, to start them off there. But, you know, I just wasn't, I wasn't convinced on the form. And yep. it's the same way Andy Dufresne. Like, I think on a big stage, I'd, Andy Dufresne won't show up. No, oh, no, no, 100%. no, 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 no. Uh, That was a four, ho- three or four horse race he ran at Navin. You know, yeah. the Joseph O'Brien horse kind of give him a good enough race of it and he got through in the end up but I don't know it just wouldn't be something that I would be rushing Actually, to get in yeah before before we go on to anything else uh, we may I suppose touch on the fact uh, the big dog was heavily punted in Eat Like the Rear's race now that yeah. horse came down I think it was a, it was an early an early I suppose unseat but uh, yeah, he out early Overall, I think that could be definitely one to be looking at for next time out. I think Peter Fatty is starting to get into the swing of things again. And uh, it should be, well, it should be definitely one to be taken over, considering, I suppose, there is someone liking it anyway. Now, whether that's someone from the yard or someone that's heard something or other else like that, we don't know. But definitely have a cheeky bet and know the next time it runs. I definitely think it should be... It should be well worth considering anyway, the fact that, look at it, it's probably in good form and it's probably going well at home and hopefully the the unseat doesn't take too much out of it. Uh, moving on then to, the, to Thursday in Tremor. Uh, look at it, it, it was a very, very strange day for racing. Uh, there was an awful lot of, let's just say, underperformers basically. Uh, let's, just, let's just say that. But I definitely think... You're very was, kind. Brosna Rocco uh, for me is definitely one to be taken out of it now for um, going forward uh, it's owned by Tony Kilduff uh, it was actually bred by Tony Kilduff as well if I'm not mistaken but uh, Stephen Jared Carey it's his first winner from two runs as a licensed trainer I definitely think that's a stat to be looking at uh, hopefully he'll be able to keep that record going and he could definitely be Look at it, he could be another Barry Connolly. He could be one that just gets winner after winner after winner. What do you make um, of To be honest with you, Shane, I only looked at the first race. Um, <laughs> purely based on the fact that there was one horse in the Mullen Source, Cavallino. Um, yeah. I, I like this one now. Yeah. I know he came hard and... And he was going well, to, he was to win as well. He was going to win as yeah. well if he didn't run through yeah. the last. <laughs> exactly. As you said, there's been some quite or underperformers there at Tremor that day. And it's one to take out of it. And maybe watch for the next race. And if he hurdles a bit better and everything goes his way, could be a winner. Dean, what about yeah, yourself? Um, yeah, well, obviously, anybody that was watching last week uh, and seen our interview with Sean, first and foremost, I think Sean got up and walked away okay, and so did the horse. I know he, I think he sat out punches town today. Um, hopefully, he's back in at Ferry House and, and all is well with him, and, he, and he's got no serious injuries there, first and foremost. Um, for that, I have nothing wrote down, but I did like uh, Shark Hanlon on the bumper. Actually, pretty impressive away there. That yeah. day, and and kind of tough enough conditions. Yeah. Um. Other than that, nothing really stood out. Well, was it a good bumper though? I don't think it was. It was any great standard like. It was. It wasn't of. Well, you 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 like the 
the Jiggins Town one for um, Henry, Henry Bromhead. Bromhead. Yeah, like you know, it's hard to get a gauge on it, but coming from we were just talking about Sky Ace, coming from the Shark Hand and Gorders, you can never know. You know, you don't really know where this one could rock up, and you know, yeah. I, I like the I just I just like the way it won. It, it kind of I don't think it's going to be a a headline grabber, but it could yeah. be one that makes it's people a nice, feel quickly. It's a nice front run and sword, and it definitely looks like. I suppose it will appreciate a hurdle or a chase and fence in time to come, but look, at it, it's it's very hard to read Tremor. It's very hard to try and find a, a diamond in the rough, basically. Oh, uh, yeah, then moving on to the day then in Punchestown. Captain Guinness, was she was he impressive or will time will tell? Just basically, it's hard to know, really. <sighs> You'd really want to see how it goes now next time out, how this race affected it. Obviously, look, at we know Captain Guinness has a bit of a heart problem now. We, we don't really know how well it's going to take now in the next 24 to 48 hours. Um, but I suppose, look, at it was pretty impressive and it, was, it did win its race. Um, other than that, there wasn't really anything spectacular there in Punchestown today. It wasn't great racing. Um, Cheltenham though some neck in the cross country how impressive was this uh, Ben or is it Ben Harvey isn't it yeah yeah Ben <coughs> Harvey um, is his first his first um, English winner and his first Cheltenham winner at that it, it was very impressive and I look he did get an 11 day ban but I don't think that's going to be the, at the the top of his list now I think he was more worried about getting his Cheltenham winner than get the getting the banner, get getting eleven days. Um, look at it, it, it. It's interesting whether it's going to go to the big meeting in Cheltenham and put it up to the likes of Easy's Land or Tiger Roll if if Tiger Roll runs. But I don't know. I I just think it could be one for the likes of maybe Punchestown or something like that. I don't think it's anything too special. Um, although look at it was a very impressive winner there today, but it's hard to know. What do we make of court made? Uh, it's a, a tough one. Yeah. What what, what happened? The the one of the Mullinses that was supposed to ride got injured or didn't travel or what was there? I don't know. I didn't hear anything anyway, but. My probably understanding was that we they they might have just maybe tested they might have like they might have some test for COVID or something like that that didn't didn't allow them to travel yeah. maybe or something like that. But yeah, it, it it's strange because David Mullins normally partners uh, Court Maid, and when the two of them to, are together, it's like it, it's nearly a better better combination than strawberries and cream. Like the the two of them just get on so so well together. Uh, yeah. I I think if Robbie could ride that race again, he would. I think he definitely threw it away. The fact that he was on the the inside rail, which would be the outside of the, the main body of the field, the way he was riding was really suiting court made. Now had he stayed on the, the outside of the runners or say turning in coming on to towards the inside rail I don't think she'd have lost too much ground or she would have definitely like we know she does handle soft to heavy ground like we know she's able to go and win a race in ground conditions like this but why Robbie Power decided to just slow her up and try and take her around the other horses is beyond my belief like immediately there he gave away three four maybe even five lengths we don't really know and the way she just powered up the hill, I know the horse in front started idling, but I think it was a poor ride. And I, I don't often say it too many times, but I think it was a bit of a boo-boo made by Robbie Power. Um, I agree on what you say is about if, if he had the chance to ride the race again, I think he would ride it differently. Mm. Um. I just thought she had every chance coming there, but I just thought she was left with too much to do. Yeah. Yeah. Ryan, what did you think? You know, 
Yeah, I'd, yeah. I, I'd be on the same boat, to be honest. Um, look, Robbie, Robbie wasn't great on her, was he? Um, but then again, look, probably Tom or Mullins told him, take it handy, just let him get used to the fences. Get ready for the festival, maybe. Yeah, is she uh, one? Is she... I, I, I think that horse takes... I, if I'm not mistaken, I mind an interview after a race in Leverstown that Tom Mullins done, and I think he says that this one was a wee bit tricky. Mm. Loads of talent, but was kind of tricky as in getting ready for races and, and how, they, how, how they come out of a race. I, I'm not a massive fan of this let somebody bowl along in front and have an easy lead. Mm. I think if if your horse is if 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 I'm a, if I was an owner and I had a horse running in a race, doesn't matter if it was two mile or seven furlongs or whatever. If I really fancied my horse to one, or I was told my horse is a good chance, I'd want it to be sitting no more than maybe eight lengths off whatever's leading. Mm. Just yeah. it's just so as you're not making yourself having to make up a wide lot of ground. In that soft, heavy ground, it could be a bit of an ask. So I don't know. I would say if Robbie could ride the race differently, he would. And I would say going forward, she could work up somewhere and and won. Yeah, definitely. Like, and it, and you just touched on it there, Dean. Like that, she was given too much to do. Like, I suppose what he was probably trying to think of was to try and get the horse to sleep and then come with one late surge, like what he did, but. It's very easy to do that in, say, a scenario. Well, look at like normally when you're put like keeping a horse asleep and just coming with a lay surge, you would hold them off the pace. Like that's generally the way a jockey would would ride a, a situation like that. But you can also do that by say getting it in amongst the pack as well and getting them say just like like what you said, sitting off the pace and just bowling along, just keeping it you know, handy and everything else like that. And then, you know, bang goes the weasel and then off she goes. Um, yeah, that's it. Just, just keep, if you, as you say, keep her in the middle of the field, covered yeah. up, horses around you. Make sure you've got an out for, if, if, if you see a mistake coming or, you know, you think there's a mistake coming out of a horse in front of you. Whatever. But like, you know, yeah. if, you, if you drop them on, there's like certain eight lengths off or between eight and the leader, like it's, it's you're not like you know you're talking four or five strides for, yeah. for some of them machines there because like, the, the, some of them horses are just they're animal they're pure machine the way they just pick up and go like yeah but i don't know yeah. i just think i think if we could ride it differently it would yeah that's definitely it it's it's certainly it's certainly an interesting topic and whether she does go to Cheltenham or not it's it's hard to know really she's only went she's only went to twice now and she was beaten both times but it's 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 a hard one to call basically. Okay, so just to recap on the racing gun by um Laz, what did you make say of the race and say over in England as well? There's a few Irish horses that went over. Uh, I know Dean keeps a close eye on that sort of things. What do we make of the race and say Monday there was there was Musselboro, wasn't there? Yeah. Um yeah. um Musselboro it started off kinda of well. I know you had uh the Ross O'Sullivan one tucked up on the first race. I kind of, I was baffled by the the tactics on that to say the least. Dropped yeah. there was eleven horses in the race. There was a, a line of five in front, a line of five in second, and he was widest of the five. It was kind of left with a lot to do. Yeah. Um, then we talked about uh, in the patron. We talked about uh, Danny McMenamin's charge for a local trainer that has in Down Patrick. It wasn't great price. It was about six to four the night before. It won at five to six or something like that there. But um, that won nicely. And then the bumper. Now, here's where it gets interesting. The bumper horse. Kenny Gee Lad for Stuart Crawford. Right. Fifth at Down Royal behind Sir Garhard, who's probably the champion bumper winner. All the way he was beaten a long way that day. And second that day was the banger down. Who came out and sluiced up a Pontius Town on Friday? Yeah. Well, I wouldn't say sluiced up. He got there, he battled back hard, but they were well clear of the third. 
Uh, third that day was a horse called Vantage Prosecco, who Shane tipped up a couple of weeks ago at Limerick and wanted a nice price for Henry de Bromhead and Patrick Mullins. Fourth in that race actually runs over hurdles tomorrow uh, or on Saturday at uh, Ferry House and is 12 to 1. Ryan, what did we say we call that again? Night Command? Uh, Night Combat. Night Combat. Night Combat. That runs there. And then back in fifth that day was Kenny Gay Live for Sure Crawford. Now that bumper form worked out serious well and it was no surprise to see him won. And I think he was actually favourite or second favourite back from five to one that day ahead of yeah. the Emmett Mullins winner. Uh, Tuesday for me then. Or no, sorry, Ren, go your head. What? Did you like gonna hang up muscle bra? <laughs> 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 um, yeah well I suppose just Danny's ride was just phenomenal wasn't it he's always yeah. been good to us and just he's just one of the best upcoming jockeys in Britain at the minute by probably a long shot and no doubt he's going to keep riding winners and look at that's probably one of the best rides for me anyway of that day if this I doesn't get right of the month, if this does not get right of the month, Sky Sports are definitely looking at something else because that was incredible. He came from about one, 10 lines off the pace and he just absolutely stormed up. <laughs> that is uh, That was on Wednesday, sorry. That was asking Wednesday for shit. answers. Yeah. Oh, the first one was make the... How long make the now? tays yeah. um, for a local trainer. Yeah. Uh, I, I as, as you say, Ryan, Danny's always been good with us over at Racing Records. Like we've done podcasts from before, we've had a good chat, and you know he's always in the sound. You know, we always like to see it. I've seen a stat now. I'm actually annoyed that I didn't write this down, but for a, a conditional jockey, his one percentage rate this season is absolutely phenomenal for a, an apprentice or an, I don't know, apprentice. What is it? Amateur, conditional jockey. It was absolutely phenomenal. But um, moving on then, did any of you lads see Fontwell on Tuesday, the 1240, that uh, yeah. Gary Moore train won? That, this, that won the same race as Goshen won the year yes. before? Actually, I, this, I, seen the I seen the highlights of it. I didn't I didn't see the race live or anything like that. But yeah, yeah that's, that horse is very, very impressive. I definitely think forty nine lengths like that. Yeah, that was definitely <laughs> something they write home about. Like, um, yeah. yeah, definitely. Uh, it, uh, um, is it another motion though? Who knows? Yeah, only, we, we only time will tell. Tomorrow. We see Goshen yeah. tomorrow in, in in Cheltenham. We'll we'll see how good this one is. I hope it's good because I have it backed at I think seven to one for an at an anti post market for the champion hurdle. For Doesn't sure. really look good now if it doesn't yeah. win. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> have to, yes. uh, you really think Goshen's going to be Apton though? Uh, I I think if he can get going, he definitely has the ability. Uh, he right? definitely. I definitely think so. Yeah, he just looks like an absolute beast. That's my yeah, opinion of it. I, I think yeah. I think he'd be able to give seven pounds to Epitant, and I'd be bold in saying that. But I definitely think he is an absolute monster. I I I like Gosen Gos or Goshen, but mm. and then there's no one come close to Epitant. Yeah, yeah. I definitely see the I, way. I think, she quickens up. She the, the gears she has unbelievable. Oh, it's uh, the, whatever price for she has, for, whatever price she has for the champion hurdle, just gone. Have every yeah. bit of it. Yeah. Have but, every uh, bit of it. If there was a horse to beat Epitant, I think it is Goshen. It has to be. He'll set off from the front and he'd put on the behind serious pressure for him. Yeah. Now whether that sets her up or not, we don't really know. But she'll definitely no- like the. The, the pace angle at it anyway I would imagine yeah that's the one thing that's sort of worrying me but yeah. the likes of um, San Roy and Abacadabra none of them have a hope against Epitant simple as that I, I'd be confident saying that I think yeah. San Roy ha, ha, will have work cut out to try and give £7 to Epitant Goshen maybe not considering he is just 
an absolute monster and he is a pacemaker basically. Um, he's an absolute lunatic. lunatic. <laughs> but I love that about him. Like he's just a poor lunatic. Like says, yeah. race. You want the race? Ah, we'll give you a race. So <laughs> but, I know I'll probably eat my words here, but I just don't rate him. Ah, I don't know. Hey, go just, away, right? Go away. <laughs> I don't rate anywhere near as close as you. Yeah, see I, him I, now. I, 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 I know. I'll probably eat my words. I'll take him with us now. But look, I, 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 I just have a hard time liking him. It, it, he's he's good at his, he's good at what he's done so far. Like I would have liked to have seen him stand up last year and and go on and one and like when he, he, he done so much, but. But so like, he's got his chance for revenge this time around this year. Even saying that, like the improvement he showed last year in his jumping was second to none. It was yeah. it was like two, watching two completely different horses. And like I was sort of like in Ryan's boat there, and I wasn't rating him. I says no. I says he jumps like that, he'll end up in fucking air like instead of yeah. Cheltenham. He, he's just so wayward. But in fairness to him, like he's so straight and he's so. Well, he, he's not so straight, but like he, he's straightened up fairly well. And he's, you know, if he can just brush up with his jumping a little bit more and get, I suppose, turn down the lunatic lunatic button a little bit, just to, I suppose, just settle himself a little bit better. I definitely think he's a great, great chance for the champion hurdle. But look at who am I to know. Um, yeah, oh, moving Jesus on. Christ, he was fucking, he was diabolical on the flat over the last couple of months. Yeah. yeah he yeah, was absolutely <laughs> atrocious. He was. was flat right, right. He's a national hunt horse now, so it was just yeah. there. <laughs> He's no flat horse and now. Stay there, right? He has absolutely <laughs> no hope for winning his flat race. No. No. But, yeah. He was a big... He, was he a big, wouldn't win a zero with 65 handicap on the dog. <laughs> He would. Uh, it's hard to win a zero to sixty-five at Dundalk. Yeah, right? well, that's true. <laughs> I had a horse that tried many a time, and also he could come a second. <laughs> oh. Um, like going on to Wednesday, um, asking for answers for Danny McMenamin. Um, if anybody hasn't seen the race, what a race! It came from the clouds. If this pops up on, uh. Sky Sports Racing right of the month. You have to vote for him. Danny deserves the vote. How he got this horse up. Unbelievable. And the yeah. fact is, he won by three lengths. <laughs> 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 you would have you would have no, been saying what a ride right if he had got up by a nose. He got up by yeah. three lengths. It was like, what? You'd, you'd be ripping up the dock at two furlongs from home. And next he just started flying. He literally got a new lease of life. <laughs> If you were standing on the bookies, you'd have been away out the door. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan is um, done. Bag. Bag. But like that that was just a great ride, like wasn't it, lads? Yeah, uh serious, serious and fair play to Danny and hopefully well I'm nearly confident that we'll get on the nomination for ride of the month, but if it doesn't oh, if, it should, it get, if it doesn't I'm get sure it's like a camera shot coming to the last. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh moving on now to this week, lads. Uh, there's some very very interesting racing coming up uh, Nace on Monday I was looking through it there's definitely some interesting horses one in particular Ideal, Ideal Pal gets her, her first run or his first run over over hurdles uh, coming from Mick Mulvaney uh, I think it's a Nace winner or else it's, it's run very very credibly in Nace before uh, you'd obviously know the colours It's I think it's his wife's colours the green and the green and pink, pink. Uh, quarters uh, it, it looks interesting and it doesn't look to be an overly it doesn't look to be an overly good standard so look at I think the horse is definitely going to get the ground it's all about how it jumps because you know as well as I do lads Nace can be a punter's graveyard uh, if they don't jump or if they don't jump right but I definitely think if it's sound and it jumps right and jumps straight it should be very, very hard to beat. In my personal opinion, I think it's going to use the pace angle and it's going to use the fact that it loves heavy ground. It'll take take things on and it'll be very, very hard to pass. It'll take a very good horse to pass it if it's there or thereabouts in the making. As well as that, Lord Royal is a chaser that I definitely like the look of going into this season. Uh, he 
makes his, I suppose, his comeback after a very nasty fall in Turles last time out. He was going on to win that particular day and look at hopefully all is right and he should be well capable of winning a race like this. I think he's rated 160 over hurdles. So he's definitely got plenty of pace and he's got, look at, he, he, he's got a great, I suppose, angle going into it. And he's well built as well. He's definitely one of the biggest horses I've ever seen anyway. Uh, so he should have plenty of scope for chasing. All he needs to do is just brush up and just jump in a small little bit. Overall, it's decent racing on the cards. Uh, Dundalk is Wednesday. Lads, do you see anything that's coming up or did you have a look or a chance to look at anything coming up this week? Um, yeah, no, just on that, Nays nice meeting Shane. Gallard de Manil um, running the first for the Donleys. I think he's going to be a very, very nice horse. He's came over from France to Mullins' yard and Look, I, I think he's going to win that first race very, very nicely. Um, then That's the same on, one I was like, he'll pad. <laughs> um, then at Dundalk, Katina Zapata, Henry de Bromhead horse, um, ran very well in the barrier trial at Dundalk. And last time, I think it got gambled from 33 to 9 or something, but only finished seventh. It's definitely going to get an improvement on that and I'd say it could be pointed again no doubt um, I mean what do you think for me there's a couple I like uh, and again I am looking at Irish runners across the, the wee pond on Sunday at 10 past 3 you see Stuart Crawford send one horse to Carlisle Hollywood uh, Mount or Holly Mount sorry Holly Mount but that horse also has an entry in the bumper at air on Monday. So whatever one it runs on, probably be the best chance. Uh, yeah. It also has another one, Tweed's Corner, uh, entered in that bumper in Carlisle. Now, Brian Hughes has jacked up the, the ride Holly, Holly Mount in that race, and I would give her a big squeak. Uh, as I was saying there, Stuart won the race the other day in Musselburgh uh, then on Monday sees a whole host of Irish Raiders in Scotland Dennis Hogan has ones there Gordon Elliott has ones um, and the one that I would be looking at there and thinking that can't be beat is Fancy Foundations of Gordon Elliott's Richard Johnson takes the ride one at one Canton I think it was Shane yeah, wasn't Canton it there. when Canton was it last week a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it was the week before. Yeah, yeah, it was he very, very. Take, I'd say he'd take all the beating there. I'd say he'd, he'd won that. Um, them's two that, them's two that I like. Um, I haven't looked at Dundalk yet. I, I, I tend to do it a couple of days in advance whenever the cards have been yeah. kind of confirmed. Yeah, just so we can to, get a better it's idea hard to do on when, things. It's hard to do when the ballots are aren't aren't dished out yet. So it's look at it's all right, but um. Tell you who yeah. is entered at Dundalk on Wednesday. Irish Poseidon, he won tonight for Dean. Obviously, oh, I, Irish Poseidon. Dean feeling my tip last night as well. Snooze, you lose, I man. definitely would have been on that as well. <laughs> yeah. uh, uh, Dean, you're absolutely on fire in this patron now. Uh, but yeah, moving on to Dun or Down Ryle Thursday. This one definitely looks to be a very, very interesting card. I definitely think. Look, at it. it's not necessarily my best strike rate on course, but uh, it's definitely great, great race and involves solar heat in particular for Dot Love. Was third last time out in Limerick at 40 to 1. Keep a very close eye on this one, lads. This one handles the ground and should be well capable of winning a race of this sort of nature. Uh, another one as well that's definitely probably going to be my nap of the day. Alone among millions in the second last race, the 255. It's balloted in one, so more than likely you're going to see this horse running. I can't see any way this horse is going to be taken out unless it's injured or Sam Curling sees something that's, I suppose, better a better chance. But it's six from six in the or it's six six wins from his last six runs. Uh, it's had its, it, a, a bit of a blow in there in the the last time in I think Drumahan point to point. Uh, very very impressive that day, lads. 
this horse is going to be serious, serious going into the winter. It's going to love the heavy ground and it should take plenty of beating in the 255 in the second last race. Um, that's, that's a queer hot race, that Shane. I'm just looking at it here. Oh, is it? Yeah. Bellaway's on there for Wally Mullins. Okay. Um, it's all guesswork by Gordon Elliott. Uh, oh, Solomon, Grund- Solomon Grundy. Uh, okay. Stand up and fight for Enda Bulger. Oh, wow. Walk, okay. Walk to, <laughs> walk, to freedom, walk to freedom for John Harrington or Jessica Harrington, sorry. That's, yeah. a, that's, a, that's a tidy race, that's that. A, that's a very nice race. Um, Although it yeah. is the highest, second highest rated in the race. Yeah. He, he's rated 137, by the way. By the way, that's the one that run very well at the champion, or at Cheltenham, wasn't it? Yeah, he maybe? was He was second. second, and he won in Nace beforehand. Uh, yeah. He was second last time out in Ferry House, the, the point-to-point sort of meeting. Um, yeah. He was second that day behind... Uh, Anya O'Connor and J.P. McManus I think it was was the Nile Madden's horse fight. it could stand have been stand up and fight. fight that's the one yeah yeah, um, yeah that, that was that was that day but I, look at I, I I stand by alone alone among millions it, it won a very impressive point to point in um, Bell Harbour last year uh, so look at Bell Harbour is known for producing very very good chasers or staying chasers anyway and Alone Among Millions definitely looks to be one that will appreciate the ground more so than most. Uh, finally then, Ennis Gary. Uh, it, it could be, I suppose, third time lucky uh, for Barry Connell. It was second the last two times. Uh, I definitely think, look at the fact that Barry Connell is in such good form. It should be a bit of a possibility more so than a, a certainty. But I definitely would be taking a cl- closer look at that and it should be it should be there or thereabouts. Anyway, that's my opinion of it. Uh, lads, what did you did you look at down rail? I know Dean is just after taking a quick look at it there, but uh, did you look at uh, it no. in detail? I haven't looked at a single thing from down rail. Um, I'm just waiting for them final declarations. To be honest, uh, look, that's I haven't even flicked through the card. Well, here's one for you, right? When we just to touch on. And that, yeah. za- ex- that exact same bumper, Shane, that you're talking yeah. about there, the Barry Connell one. Number nine, Largy Must for Stuart Crawford, was sixth behind none other than Kenny Gillad, uh, Pre- Advantage Prosecco, yeah. the Banger Doyle, and Sir Garhard. So there's one for anybody that's looking, okay. and that farm has worked out. That farm has worked out extremely well. Four of the five horses in front of it has has won races, so that's something. Yeah, it definitely is. Um, but yeah, that's from my understanding anyway. That's as much as we know for this week anyway. We'll be talking to Rona McNally say next week, talking about the Navin Christ or the Navin meeting coming up to Christmas. So that's definitely going to be well worth tuning in for Ronan, as we all know, he loves to get his winners around Navin and. I think it's, I think I read somewhere that it's his favourite track to get winners at. But uh, so surely you'd imagine if he has runners there that he'd be, well, I suppose capable of producing a winner or two and hopefully he'll be able to share it with, with all of us. Um, to close off the show, I want to give a quick cl- quick plug to Patron. Um, how well has that been doing, lads? Like it has been absolutely on fire. It's absolutely phenomenal how well we've actually done on it. We get, yeah. I think we haven't went a single day without having a winner on it so far. Yeah. Apart, from, apart from Thursday when we put all our eggs in one basket, but that oh, that was under- yeah. that was that was an early fence faller, but every single day, day we on separate tips we have had a winner. Yeah, and not only that, every single day that we put up tips apart from uh Thursday there last it it's it ended up being a profitable day, not more so, not more so a win, a win bet or anything else like that. It's profit, and that's what we yeah. try and try and say boost is profit. I suppose look at nearly every single day. Like we, Dean, you dug us out of the fire big time there today. Obviously, I had court maids. Ryan had, uh, you know what I mean, Harry. 
Dean had a double in the dock that absolutely stormed up. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was, I'd say my main selection was um, Irish, Irish Poseidon. I, and, like, you know, to be fair, seeing that at 92 last night, I, I, I don't have a notion what the bookies are at putting that up at 92. Yeah. And it was no, I, I'm telling you, we thought last night it should have been 2 to 1. Yeah. And it, end up, it ends up going off at 15 to 8. It should have been going off at even money. I know that he just got up in the line, but it's the way the horse runs. That's his style. You know, yeah. it's nothing flashy about him. He went up three pound for one on, on his second start in Ireland. He stayed yeah. in the zero to 65 bracket, which yeah. is probably a class above. He probably has to go out of that now. Will that bring about improvement? Hard to tell. But your man, Matthew Smith, is great for improving horses. So yeah. it's, it's hard not to know. Um, oh, yeah. And then... The second all you one. Is, all you have to do is look at one cool poet. Uh, the way he, he improved that horse and the way he 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 made made Galway, uh, I suppose, the Galway Race and Festival history with was in a four four in the one week. Three, I think it was it. Three, three oh, in the four. week. Four, four in the week, was it? Yeah, four. Yeah, like it was crazy. Like it just madness. And every time it ran, it actually got better and better and better. Like yeah. it started winning by further and further. But. Uh, <laughs> it was crazy, like, um, but yeah, look at that's you. You were just about to say something there, actually, Dean. Um, I was just on about the the second, um, yeah, one or then uh, bear story. That that horse actually was seven to four last night, and I think it touched five to two to stage today, yeah. um, and ended up winning at even money. Uh, that, that you know, I thought that would take some beating, but again, I just fancied. Irish Poseidon at the price, you know, <laughs> you couldn't beat it. Last night when I tapped that up, or when I mentioned it, sorry, my main selection was Irish Poseidon, but I mentioned that one, it was about seven to four. So, you know, it's meant that we are in about uh, 35, plus 35 points for a one point stake um, so far this month. And we're on day, what day, what date is it, lads? We're 10 uh, days, 11 days. 11th. We're 11 days in. We missed the first day, so out of 10 days, you know, we've had plus 35 points for a one for a one point stake. So if you're putting a one euro on, you're up 35 quid in the month. Yeah. yeah. Or in like, the 10 days. And most people would bet maybe a fiver or a tenner. So, you know, you're up the guts of 350 quid if you're betting a tenner. Yeah. Um, I suppose what we want to say tell people that we're we're relatively relatively very very cheap like a 10 euro a month like is is for for this sort of service like it is great great value like there's an awful lot of people out there that have been blind betting and they'd be say oh put a tenner on this or put a tenner on this and in in no time at all like you're 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 down serious money and you're it end, it ends up spiraling out of control. Whereas what we do is we pick out one horse that we really, really like the look of. And another thing as well, we try and find a great, great value as well. We we make a rule that we don't go any shorter than even money. So the worst you can do of getting a winner with us is double your money. So that's basically what we are all about. So the more I suppose the the the, the value that we're actually proclaiming out there is that there is ways and means about going about, say, betting at a profit. And I think what we are doing is literally betting at a profit. It, it, it's as simple as that. Uh, it's 10 euro per month, like I said. Uh, for that, you will be getting, I suppose, three tips per day, uh, hopefully. More often than not, they do come in and they do end up winning and they do end up returning overall profit for that day. Um, I suppose, look, the record speak for, speaks for itself. Uh, lads, yeah, we're, we're touching there, I suppose, the profit loss. We're, we're at, I think, 17 points so far for this particular week. Like, this week alone has been absolutely mental. We've had, say, 17.53. 17.53. <laughs> Okay, well, look at that's <laughs> even better. But yeah. um, 
yeah, look at like that's that's basically it. Like if you had a, a tenner, let's just say per bet, you're up 175 quid, and that's not just winning 175 quid. You're in 175 quid more so than what you had said at the start of the week, which is absolutely unbelievable for our side of things anyway. Um, I leave a link in the description below. Say if you want to join us up, uh, it's easy enough to do so. I will uh, state before if you are signing up, if you intend to say bye for a couple of months in advance, please don't do so. The way Patreon works is it automatically charges at the start of every month. I'm only saying this because there was one member that joined up that wanted to pay for a year in advance. And what that would end up doing is you'd be taking that sum out every single month. And we don't want that. And it just makes things a little bit easier for us as well. But it just gives a little bit more, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, confidence, let's just say, for the, the punter, just to be able to say, right, okay, well, I'm signed up now and like this is going to be coming out, but we know that these lads are good and we know that we're going to be getting the money back anyway. Like yeah. that's basically it. Well, I'll, I'll echo what he says there, Shane. Like, what you get from that is you have three different minds. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we agree on things, sometimes we don't, but we all have our valid reasons for not getting on the same horse. Yeah. We all tend to, to avoid and pick different meetings. Yeah. You know, and the thing about it is you break the 10 euro a month down, 250 a week. There's a, new, a certain recent newspaper that charges over like, I think it's close to a five or a day. Yeah. And you don't get as many good or yeah. as much out of it. Like, well, yeah, when so I wonder what paper that is. Break it down to two euro <laughs> a week. Yeah. Considering, <laughs> considering last week, right, we had plus 16.5. So 16.50 points total for the week if you had your 250 on that you're covering a couple of months and then this yeah. week we're in 17.53 so you know what i mean like if you're breaking it down on the 250 so people have basically paid in the second week so that's a five or on and they're 35 quid in profit or 35 points in profit it's yeah. not bad like there, you know there was there was there was one member that joined up on the very first day and we put up say three horses and I think he did wasn't it doubles or trebles or something like that that yeah. myself and Ryan's myself and Ryan's tip came in and Dean yours is an odd runner but like yeah. that lad made seven months worth in one day like he made seven months worth in one day and then he yeah. could just sort of sit back relax and say right well I can either do this now or I can do this and that's the way we were about and it's only coming out of ten or a month some places are caught or charging 50 some places are charging even more like it just it breaks down to great value for good research and it all comes back to us uh to i suppose improve the podcast and that's basically what it is about and as well as that the members that will be joined up by christmas will be entered into a draw to win 20 euro free bet a free bet so like I, when you when you put it all into perspective, like you're, you could be doubling your money as soon without even having a bet. At that stage, like it just makes so much sense. Um, but look, at, I'm gonna finish it off there. Like I said, I leave a link in the description below. Uh, please make sure to keep like and share and subscribing to the channel. Uh, visit our own channels as well. I'm the Peaky Blogger. Um, that's over on YouTube and Facebook and everything else like that. And the two lads here with me are Race and Records. Make sure to go over to their them two channels and subscribe to them as well. But I'm Shane Rooney. That's been this week of racing. And hopefully with the week of racing ahead, we've picked out plenty of winners for all of you. Thanks very much. And Shane, Thanks. just before we go, uh, I got sent a piece of fan art. You know, we don't we don't get too many of them now, but What's someone has kindly drawn a picture of you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Jesus Christ. That's that's definitely Oh my god. Right, you you're definitely you're definitely need to be worked a bit harder than that if that's the way you're 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 spending free time. But look at 
<laughs> I'm going to leave it there. We've been the Irish Racing Hour, and hopefully we'll be back again for another great, great weeks of racing. Thanks.